Hello everyone, welcome back to online NPTEL course on structure, form and architecture synergy. Today we uh, will be discussing lecture number 10 and it is all about uh, learning lessons from animal architecture. So, so far whatever we have discussed in previous lectures, we have seen some wonders, some creation by famous architects, our ancient people and structural engineers, so buildings that we formed over the time. But now uh, not only uh, the human architects, in nature we also have uh, some great architects, some birds, some animals, some even small creatures who can create wonders. And obviously from those kind of architecture, we can get some idea, we can see their formation, the material they used and how they really built it. So, we can get inspired from them and we can apply that knowledge in our creation. When we decide upon structural form or creating architecture or choosing right material for the right structure. So, let us begin. So, this is a nice example of a nest uh, and it is uh, the bay waver nest which is basically formed with a perfect knitting of the grass and it is something hanging from a branch of the tree where like uh, the threat like other animals, other predators cannot reach to that part. So, in this lecture we will get to know about such more from different different uh, you know birds or maybe it is small ants or maybe it is some other animal. So, regarding this particular nest, I will also show you uh, like uh, a nest that I have uh, during that particular portion. So, why they built? It is pretty similar uh, the reason that is why we built our architecture or buildings. So, primarily for getting a shelter then sometimes for the storage they need uh, specially for the nursery for the you know uh, the kids they have to feed them uh, they sometimes also need a storage and also sometimes for the communication to make that nest to really make it attractive to their mate. And also they build the structural system in such a manner that which will resist the external uh, you know load like uh, the wind pressure or sometimes it may be the rainfall, some natural you know uh, cause that may disturb their nest. So, they decide the structure on that and also choose the material on that ground and also to protect from the predators. Now, the come to the material. So, they use the material which is available in nature that in the earlier slide we have seen that they have used. Uh, the green grass which will again you know uh, get hardened and it will change color uh, in presence of sunlight. Sometimes it may be uh, nature residuals that you know the fallen branches, leaves uh, and other uh, residuals through a materials. So, sometimes we just throw the you know material as waste, um, it may be the wear, it may be some other uh, stuff that normally we throw to the dustbin or you know open space. So, which will be used. So, uh, that is why we can say that uh, they can create good uh, based out of waste kind of product. And sometimes also they create the material at their own. So, like the spider uh, they just use uh, from their own um, you know then their saliva or something uh, they just extrude uh, from their body and then you know they create the material for their shelter or the nest. We start with uh, sociable waiver. So, you can see in the image. So, it is a huge structure and normally it is being made with uh, like some grass or some vines like material sometimes to give the stability they use the stick. And here why it is called sociable waiver because it is not a single nest. So, they believe in community. So, this represent a community dwelling uh, like a mass housing and where they can stay over a period of generation. So, that is something really uh, a good uh, lesson from this kind of structure. And if you uh, look into the system that 
there are small holes these are nothing but the entrance to that uh, nest and you know uh, that overall feeling the inside as because the material used which is not uh, which is a bad conductor of heat. So, maintaining the inner temperature they actually store it. So, normally uh, during the night time they can uh, definitely get some coziness inside that and uh, they used to live and thousand and thousand of bird birds they can stay together in this and normally they make this structure uh, which is uh, like some height uh, maybe on tree or sometimes maybe some post. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, example from uh, sociable Weber. So, uh, these are another two pictures of that one they build it uh, on tree and other one on the post. So, they build over the time and you know uh, again it is a representation of something where uh, they show the community uh, dwelling or the housing. So, this kind of you know uh, architectural uh, features to create uh, the mass housing can be uh, you know derived from this kind of concept and so far the material is concerned they uh, really build it in such a manner with uh, you know multiple layers of this grass and stick so that they can also maintain the temperature fluctuation which is also essential to protect them from the um, you know external uh, you know like uh, maybe the wind maybe the heat uh, that can disturb their you know inhabitants. Now, move to the next one this is the boar bird and here you can see that this is just a pile up uh, of something. So, what is new in it? But if you see that they nicely create some space in between. So, it is all started with a stick and then just they placed it uh, in a manner all the stick they use the friction to you know uh, lie them one after another. So, that it will be stable. So, this tent like structure if you uh, notice that there is a small you know uh, branch and here also you can see uh, in this picture that on which they just put the stick and grass to you know tie them up. So, this is being created, but more importantly here if you see those uh, you know berries or some flowers or other thing which is giving a contrast. So, this is something like uh, ornamentation to this. So, normally in this case uh, like the male bird uh, they build this structure and make it attractive to communicate to its mate. So, this is again um, a structure where this is uh, built by a bird and you can see the effort like it takes time. So, it is made of grass and stick uh, and stick uh, is making this structure. So, uh, again we, I, we can uh, you know match this structure with the TP structure where we also uh, get this kind of tent where different sticks are tied up and then a membrane like materials uh, is uh, you know then put on top of it to you know protect it. Now, uh, again as I mentioned that uh, they make uh, all this structure around a thin trunk and so and then they make it attractive. So, in next picture it will be much more clear. So, they nicely create this space. So, it is not the pile up. So, normally uh, uh, this structure we can resemble with when you go for a you know bonfire or something. So, we just pile up the stick, but nicely created this structure which is also giving some you know strength it will not really break up and you can see the knots uh, not the knots is like how they placed all this stick criss cross so that they will uh, be sticked uh, to each other with friction. So, move to the next example this is uh, at the opening slide also I have shown this is a nest and very nicely built and it is again uh, the formation. Okay the formation is created with the reason. So, this is the entry from the bottom and especially uh, this is built on a tree branch uh, where it is a hanging structure and this is made of the grass. So, that the entrance from this will uh, help them uh, you know to protect against the predators like the snakes or other uh, other you know uh, ferocious animal to uh, go inside and this is the portion 
uh, if I make a cross section of it. So, this is the chamber where they uh, lay eggs and uh, the kids grow up. So, they are knitting it very carefully and here they use again the grass and when it is new the fresh and malleable grass stock they used to build it. In that picture we have seen the color is green and then over the time it uh, dried up and it gave the strength uh, and this all you know grass acts as a fiber which is also considered to be good at tension. So, uh, they change the color and get hardened. These are two pictures of the same kind, but more than that uh, I have one of such. So, you can see this uh, the pretty similar to that and this is the original I have collected. Uh, so, here you can see uh, this is the bottom portion where I can put my finger up. Okay. So, this is the entrance and if I really uh, want to cut it, so I do not want to cut it. Uh, here if you see this is uh, basically this portion is very solid and they have a you know uh, laying chamber. So, from top it is something like that. So, where they put eggs and all and as because this protection being taken, so it will not really fall down. So, when uh, this you know eggs uh, they matured and then uh, the kids they you know are ready to uh, fly away then they go out from that. So, this is the good mechanism and with this particular knitting is very nicely knitting and uh, you can see that how much dedication and how much time it requires and they make it with uh, the similar kind of material. So, they are very choosy about which kind of material to be used. So, it is not whatever available. So, they choose it and it is all uniform thickness. So, uh, you can see that you cannot really pull this grass. So, I just put the pressure, but then also it is not coming out. So, this is a, a very good example of this and uh, like definitely uh, it will sustain for some duration and whenever they do not really feel like this is safe, so they make it empty and then they build again. Now, move to the next one. This is a red uh, oven bird, uh, the you know this oven bird, uh, the name also has some justification. So, this time it is not the grass, so they used the mud and manure and they just you know uh, create the structure okay? and the dome like dome shaped structure they create and uh, you know over uh, time with sunlight it dried up and give a solidity and you know some stability to the structure and with some small, small opening. So, they can create multiple counter for the multiple you know user. So, in this case mud and manure being used and the cute dome like structure here you can see it very clearly uh, where load can be distributed even this kind of you know shape is also we have seen that it is good for uh, resisting against the wind. Uh, so, this is another good structure they made and uh, in this case this nest help them to prevent from the externalities. And now why it is called oven, uh, if you see this particular structure, so it is earlier days now we are uh, using LPG gas and other you know inductions, but earlier uh, if you see in uh, still in rural area, so they make uh, some you know oven uh, made of mud. So, after burning, so it get the strain, it hardened and they uh, use it for the cooking and all. So, this is the similar kind of structure coming up and on that ground, so they used it. And here if you see the material they have chosen this mud is basically uh, having some uh, you know uh, it is something laterite kind of thing. So, a reddish picture and along with other uh, ingredients, so they give the strength of this particular nest. This is a closer picture of the same, here you can see that how uh, you know stable and strong it is. Uh, looked like it is made on the you know on a branch uh, which is giving some some kind of base and the earlier it was on a particular post. So, it depending on 
um, the availability. So, normally in the um, urban area where like availability of trees are less, so they uh, do it on some abundant or something where there is a minimal reach or no reach by the people. So, they build their nest on that. This is the shallow bird uh, nest and it is uh, very common nowadays we see. So, here they made it with the mud and the saliva they create. So, normally again they choose some corners. So, maybe like in a building where like there is a very rare risk below the cornice or at the corner or sometimes even below the flyover. So, they used to build this kind of structure where they can uh, lay their eggs and they can stay uh, for this. So, this is again an important structure that built uh, based on uh, the material mud and saliva they mix it in a proper manner and they over the time they made it. So, uh, uh, this nest also prevent them from uh, the other externalities and as because the position if you see that uh, the keeches like uh, the snakes and all they cannot climb on the surface vertical surface. So, they create uh, this structure also very rough uh, you know uh, in this manner. So, that uh, again uh, it is giving a natural finish. This is another example of then where uh, you can see the multiple such you know shallow bird nest are formed just uh, at uh, the below the rooftop. So, again uh, there is no reason to get uh, the rain inside it and at the same time it can be you know very safe out of the reach of uh, like uh, the people or maybe this is something where like people do not really clear in a daily basis. Uh, so, now from birds we move to uh, the webs. So, here it is basically a nice uh, you know structure made layer by layer. So, it is basically the social webs which build paper nest. So, why it is called paper? If you really have a chance to look uh, like the real one. So, it is giving a you know feeling of a thin paper a handmade paper. So, it is basically a mixing plant pulp wooden particles and also the saliva uh, secretion. So, they made that material and they built it uh, over the period. So, uh, if you see that this is the outer look of that it is uh, just the envelope, but inside it they have different cells. The main purpose for uh, this uh, nest is creating to lay the eggs and then uh, they wait till they just get matured and they come out from the eggs, uh, not for the storage unlike like in uh, uh, for the beehives. So, they use it also for the storage of honey and um, like pollen. So, in this case uh, is uh, basically it is consist of several horizontal combs aligned in parallel lines. So, what exactly that will be clear by the next slide. So, this is the, the you know when they start creating it. So, you can see the cells it is similar to the honey bee. So, they create thousand um, and thousand of such cells together and they put the legs and they, they seal it with the same paper uh, you know uh, kind of you know finish. So, this is being created again with some wood particle the saliva and uh, the other uh, plant pulp and they seal it. And then after that they wrap it and they have very you know tiny um, opening to reach inside to that. And whenever uh, they just mature they just break this itself and then they go out. So, several layers of the web paper close off the entire assembles. So, that it will not open to uh, the external um, you know uh, environment and also not open to the other predators which may kill or may eat their eggs. So, this is something really very important and then uh, also the layers of physical protection they provide and also they protect against the temperature deviation. So, uh, the you know gap in between two uh, such layers is giving a void which will maintain the temperature. So, temperature fluctuation will not really affect the growth of the eggs, 
and uh, that is why they build this structure and uh, the organization from this you know the shells one after another those uh, chambers is really giving um, some idea um, to you know build our uh, you know design. Maybe we can treat it in the plan uh, a group of uh, such you know rooms or classroom or else it may be uh, something sometimes you can also treat it in the elevation which will have a similar and repetitive uh, architectural treatment. Now, as uh, I discussed that uh, this is the similar kind of you know approach, but this time it is uh, the honeybee structure and we all know how beautiful uh, they make it and it is basically the comb they create with regular uh, six site that is hexagonal um, cell which they um, actually built with the uh, wax they can produce and where um, they just store the larva and also the honey and pollen. So, once they lay the egg and they seal it with the wax. So, to protect it still it get matured and the reason behind uh, this hexagonal shape is basically uh, it fit together all these you know uh, cells one after another it can fit uh, the maximum without wasting much space and with uh, the minimal uh, effective perimeter it can give you the maximum area. So, say for example, instead of uh, hexagon if I go with the circle. So, we can see that when we make it so there is a gap and uh, that is not really effective utilization of space. Whereas, when we make it and as you know multiple you know thousand and thousand of such you know worker bees they are making this structure. So, they just follow it on that ground. So, they can easily link up one after another to create it. And here you can see the details this is one example of uh, um, this uh, you know empty honeybee structure which is very perfectly built with this this is very light and when they put the honey and then they lay the eggs, so they sealed it. So, again I am uh, showing you uh, the reason of this, so, so that you can see automatically it giving a cluster. So, this is something where uh, also we have uh, you know seen some of the buildings which also form it. So, create multiple facet, it may be a hotel room creating the view. So, again it is maximizing the space whereas, the other form uh, is not that much effective uh, than this one. So, that is why this being chosen and again this structure uh, you know helps up give some idea to the form the hexagonal form that we can create which will be easy to put um, such many uh, regular shapes one after another to build uh, the huge structure. Now, uh, this is something really uh, you know interesting and we all uh, I guess I am sure that like me you also like the series of the spider man. So, there we know the reason like uh, this is the power that one can you know create the spider web uh, which is having the strength it can elongate and probably it has been uh, like uh, the reason they create it with the spider silk they just uh, you know produce from their mouth and this is giving uh, like a cable or rope knitting structure where some of uh, you know uh, the portion is tied up with the available uh, support and then they build there with the precision. So, normally it has some additive property which will actually you know catch uh, the other insects or something. So, some, uh, like some uh, you know other flies or mosquito or some other creatures if they uh, somehow come in contact to this. So, they will you know be obstructed to that and then spider can easily store their food with this nest. So, in this case basically uh, the spider silk which is basically proteinous silk and uh, they have the spinators. Uh, so, there from there they actually create this structure. So, this particular spider web they are good uh, uh, you know um, having good steepness and also they are having this strength and stretchness. 
So, it will have some property we can uh, when we put the pressure it will elongate and then it has the property elastic property they can get the retain the original shape. So, that is why it is giving um, uh, a good uh, you know uh, example of the how structure can be built especially for with the rope and other uh, cable suspended structure. So, it is uh, having that uh, same concept and they built it at their own and in this case they produce uh, the material for their construction. So, you can see that uh, again wherever it is beyond the reach and some the area where it is not being really uh, regularly be used. So, they create it very beautifully and knitting it with perfection and there are some main uh, anchors to uh, that wave and then they built it uh, the other support like these all links are being made and so they also follow the geometry. So, depending on the spider uh, category they also go for different kind of uh, spider wave. So, this is another good example from animals architecture which we can also get uh, some clue uh, where uh, like this can be used in our building uh, structure. Uh, for specially cable suspended where like we build the tensile structure um, like uh, maybe uh, something with a very uh, thin material and we can create that overall uh, you know outcome will produce and there also we can get uh, this kind of you know cable suspended structure which uh, having tension um, to manage it. Now, come to uh, the even smaller than that that is some uh, red wood ant and they pile up. So, this mound kind of uh, structure normally we have seen in uh, the forest area or sometimes even um, the area is having some humidity just after uh, your uh, rainy season. Uh, so, this being created. So, this is again a skyscraper uh, compared to the scale of that particular animal. Uh, which is also known to you know carry almost 30 to 40 times of their weight the building materials. So, this is the skyscraper dome shaped mount of grass twigs then uh, conifer needles and then uh, again uh, they use some other you know wood dust or whatever the residuals they can pile up. Uh, so, they create this mount with proper ventilation. And these ant hills, so this is uh, hill like structure. So, it is also referred at ant hills can go up to 2 meter uh, and 5 meter wide, and depending on uh, the site and um, the nature, so it can also vary. So, inside the tower, uh, there is a mega system. So, we can only see this mount, which is uh, not looking very decorative and all but the system inside is really uh, making us uh, wonder like how this can be uh, you know built and function uh, function uh, fulfill the function uh, as per their requirement so here you can see uh, this two uh, you know image that I have taken from uh, the source so here they ha have divided the whole interior space into different segment. So, somewhere this is the chamber where uh, they like live, they just uh, put eggs, somewhere they uh, put some storage. So, they prepare everything. So, in this case if you see this, uh, these are the entry points and how will they build it up. So, that even if uh, there is some rainfall, so some thing will be protected. So, these all cells how they make it uh, uh, you know with uh, their caliber is really appreciable. So, in this case you can see that uh, the extension in the living space. So, they go even you know deeper and deeper for making their life safe. So, this is very important uh, lesson. So, this is one kind of underground structure they made and this all space are well ventilated. That is another important uh, aspect that uh, when you build your um, underground structure, so that should have some ventilation. So, whether it is naturally done 
or may be artificially. So, in this case this is a natural ventilation and they maintained the temperature. This is a model where uh, it has shown all these you know uh, aspect that is been described in this photograph. Now, next example is uh, like uh, the huge tower that is the termite skyscraper. So, here also uh, the material they use that is mud, uh, then uh, the chewed wood, their own saliva and faces. So, with that they create this material and they can go up even to you know 25 to 30 feet high. So, is uh, you can see that our average height may be 5 point uh, say uh, 5.5 feet and then it is almost 5 times to that. So, it is a huge skyscraper and also it is self sustaining mount. So, this starting up can hold up million and million of the termite along with some of you know the area that they built under ground. So, here it sells the self sustaining mounts towering up to 25 to 30 feet and it is air conditioned and the tunnel they create they are actually maintaining the temperature and the flow. So, this is very important lesson and the underground colony spread over acres. So, if we only see this is something we can also uh, say for comparison like iceberg. Uh, so, basically only a few portion that we see uh, as a superstructure, uh, it is not all they build uh, below the ground and they can really create uh, again a good underground infrastructure uh, which uh, being clear from this. So, you can see this is basically the ground level. So, on top of it you can see some of the pores. So, these are mainly made for the uh, circulation of wind which will uh, really uh, give the ventilation and um, inside that they have multiple such chambers where they grow the nursery. So, you can see the nursery uh, galleries then there are some royal cells where normally the queen uh, will stay and then also they you know cultivate some of the fungus and other combs there which will be used. So, this is another example where you can see the shape of this is uh, really high and how they have created. So, uh, if you see the close look they, there will be the hole like this and they create in a multiple uh, manner in Australia and those places it is being observed in a uh, great even in India if you uh, go to like the forest area and all in south. Uh, uh, if you go to Coimbatore and then, then you go to Cork. So, you will find this kind of uh, structure uh, where like it is being made by the termite. Now, uh, this is another example where it is uh, really uh, like um, a disturbing element gopher for like uh, the people who cultivate because uh, this is really uh, they are really getting frustrated with this. So, but they create uh, such good opening and they built uh, almost the underground township. So, with all the facilities. So, here basically the underground tunnel with air conditioned rooms for their sleeping for uh, like uh, their kids and also for the storage and also they maintained the hygiene. So, in the next slide we will see that how they create the area where the use is for the waste uh, for that. Now, again uh, another interesting thing is that they create some fracking leaves around the entrance which will basically protect the inside structure from um, the rain to penetrate uh, or go inside. And then um, another important thing in this they create some watch tower, how they create it to create the tunnel the residuals will be pile of here and there and they can watch slightly the what are the things happening is there any enemies or something to be disturbed they just blow the whistle and they have some escape route. So, without delay let us see the system. So, here it is a schematic system that I have taken from a source. So, where they have uh, like the nest where uh, they like 
uh, really grow for the kids and they also have the food storage so whatever they collect they store it for the future use then they have a drainage tunnel which is also connected so they have a, like a potty holes where they can use it as a latrine or something and you can see that there are some multiple uh, you know this pop hole is for the emergency exist and you can see that how these are uh, piled up. So, the overall township this particular uh, features how they made it uh, with proper planning and all this is really a great thing. So, this is uh, the image and here they are creating this particular hole they pile up the mud and all. So, again this is giving a sense of the planning uh, and creating the overall structural arrangement like how they put uh, all these facilities and um, this food storage away from the waste area or the drainage. So, these are something like how they distribute the whole space and then create this. So, again this is one good example of underground structure and again with this they are ventilated. So, they also uh, use this particular uh, structure for their need. Now, we are coming to the end of this uh, discussion. So, in this case it is the uh, beaver lodge. So, normally in um, the area where you have some lagoons or some water uh, body. So, there uh, they create this kind of structure. So, in this case they uh, also can regulate the water level and then create the dam. So, what exactly it is? Uh, let me take this uh, you know slide to explain you. So, this is the water body. So, this is uh, the settlement of that. So, they create a damp in this portion. So, that the reduce uh, they reduce the you know speed of the water the flow of the water and then they create this particular nest to piling up the tree branches and other things. So, like the previous image we have seen the overall this is looking a heap of uh, some you know garbage, but actually it is well uh, designed and well executed by them. And the interesting thing if you see in both the picture, uh, they can swim, they can bring this and here you can see that uh, they are uh, making this structure and then from below the water they have entrance to this. And once they reach in this flood, this is basically the dry land. So, where they can survive, they can eat, they can uh, also you know, um, you know reproduce. So, this is uh, the structure they built and again uh, this is uh, some structure or tent they built of uh, some of the tree branches and other material to protect them from. Uh, the external environment and also from the other creatures and this is really interesting to have the entrance below uh, this. So, uh, this is something the way they maintain it and creating this dam to you know slow down the uh, flow of uh, like high flow of the water body or something which will actually protect their mainness. So, this is really uh, some great work by them. And uh, like all these examples we have seen, these are some limited in information, but there are many like we can take the example of butterfly or, or maybe we can take example of different uh, kind of nest. So, every time we get uh, the sense that how accurately and whatever the available materials to them, they how they select it and build it. So, starting from the beaver to uh, the beaver lodge. So, we have seen various uh, you know deviation sometimes they have taken material from the nature sometimes they create it at their own with the saliva or the you know the spider silk they create at their own, but ultimately the outcome they uh, create that is for the survival the storage for the food uh, or maybe just uh, the most important reason to get shelter to protect uh, their lives from you know uh, from external environments and also from the predators. 
Now, this light is basically the man made creation, but inspired through those. So, here also if you can see this uh, kind of membrane structure, which is also a representation of the spider web. So, different threads and uh, some rope like material being used to create it. This is the similar kind of approach there and this is the nest. So, uh, uh, as we have seen in uh, this particular nest of Beoever. So, this is inspired by them and they create it uh, to uh, create nice environment of uh, creating the uh, form of this architecture. And it is continuing here uh, like the honeycomb structural approach being taken in the elevation. This is already we have seen in the last slide was it was a 3D printed uh, house, but here again it is the formation of uh, your uh, what we call the webs kind of uh, structure where you can see the surface. So, layer by layer, so they print it. So, it is very nicely done and this is the example from the Beijing Olympic Stadium, which is uh, um, also inspired by the bar nest. So, all this structural member they put together to so give overall ambience to that. So, this lecture I am hopeful that it will really give us some insight how we can get inspired from the animal architecture and I, I would like you to uh, really search more on that and uh, enhance this vocabulary uh, of collecting the information like different kind of you know material being used, different kind of structure being formed by uh, those animals, the birds, ants and other. So, uh, that is why that will help and with that uh, if we summarize here basically like starting from uh, like the main purpose is shelter and uh, then food storage in you know we have seen in the gopher uh, case that uh, we have this and then communication. So, the nicely uh, built uh, structure will also make it very attractive to uh, the soul mate. So, this was there and then again the material selection we have seen from you know grass to the mud and then it may be the spider silk. So, it will uh, actually uh, you know uh, we can make the long list how they make it. So, uh, I want you to do that. So, we will have more example uh, in due course of time. So, with that I also put some uh, two uh, books regarding that. So, this is one from the animal architects building and the evolution of intelligence, the other ones is the animal architecture. So, you can uh, go through these two books to get more idea about their, their you know philosophy and other thing which will help us. So, with that I conclude it uh, and uh, then we will start with the structural uh, you know properties and all will slowly move into different structural system and all. And again I thank you for taking part in this course uh, and till next lecture uh, it is bye bye from my side. Thank you.